welcome back it's andrew kramer here i've got a good one for you here today uh you need to buy my action essentials pack uh, okay <laughs> okay then uh what we're doing now is we have gone from forms switching between forms different events uh, and we're actually going to try a scenario here is a project that i prepared earlier we had this one with a timer that ran down and if you didn't pick the red one in time uh, it failed and it went to a form fantastic so i guess let's do this scenario and do something with a timer how do i do that i am going to run that down from five seconds if it fails it's going to go to a form right so this video uh this video might be a little bit longer than usual <laughs> uh, is because uh, we're going to cover timers and if else statements in one go maybe even uh variables in one video um, this is essentially what we're creating we have the code here hey dude sorry that was my cats talking <laughs> uh sponsor us on patreon uh here we are back again for another video with simsy uh, so back to our uh, boring old project right here. What we have is pick the red one. You don't pick the red one. It goes to the blue one and then it goes to question two. Uh, we're going to make a new form. And when we click on this button, uh, we're going to put the timer and all of that in that form. So let's make a new form. Let's move a bit quicker now. Uh, otherwise, this video is going to be longer on an already long video. Uh -huh. Doesn't everyone say that too? Okay, cliches are done. So question three. The best part about these is that they're going on YouTube and everyone can watch them. Aren't you so excited? My cats are. <laughs> okay. Width 700. Height 650, we lock that down. Uh, quickly with my forms. Again, we, we can do some, actually, no, we're not gonna get distracted now because that's gonna uh, change us a bit too much. Um, you can set all of these things in your form load. That would probably be a smart way to do that. Uh, in your form load, you can change the size of your form before it actually loads. You can change the start position of your form before it's actually visible. One of my cats just left the room. Uh, you can also change <laughs> <laughs> uh, form border style fix single two of my cats are, are arguing right now they're having a cat fight okay cool um, this is not an interactive lesson right here cats okay uh, let's grab all of this stuff from here I am cheating and I am going to Oops, that didn't work. Yes, good, I cut and paste this from another project. Uh, so I can bring my timer, uh, it's just a label. I've, all I've done is cheated. I've dragged a label, I've dragged another label, uh, three picture boxes, uh, awesome. I call them PB red, PB blue for the green one. That's pretty dumb. So I'm gonna call, uh, actually, what's well, probably gonna, gonna be easier to actually just change it. So I'm going to change this to Dodge Blue and change PB Green to actually green. And let's change that to Line. So we have red, blue, green. Uh, we have three picture boxes. We have a label. We have another label here. Uh, we're also going to have to introduce a new uh, object, which is an object that we should have over here now which is not in the common controls. So most of the things that you're going to use are gonna be in common controls. You need to pop down this thing here uh, and you look through, through here or you can search the toolbox and type in timer. Drag a timer on. Now timer's a bit different. You drop this on and it's going to appear down here. By default, a timer isn't visible, obviously, but by default, we have a couple things. This is the name of the timer interval 100 modifiers friend and lots of other things uh, enabled false 
means that the timer is off. When enabled goes to true, it means that the timer is gonna run down. So what that means now is that if we ran this form, this timer wouldn't actually uh, run until we actually enabled it equal true. Uh, if we wanted it to be true, and, and like in our scenario, like we had here earlier, in our scenario, we had our timer running down as soon as the form loaded. Uh, the reason that that happened is because the timer in this one is enabled to true. Uh, so it starts running straight away. So we have a label, a label, three picture boxes and a timer. Uh, name all those things correctly. What did I call this guy? I called this guy LBL question. I called this guy LBL timer. It's just a, a bit of text that I started at five uh, and it's going to count down from five. <clears throat> Fantastic. So, I am going to actually change my timer to true. So as soon as I start to change that timer, uh, as soon as I launch this form, it's gonna start counting down from five. Now, how do I actually do my timer code? Well, if I double click on this guy, it's gonna take us to question three, public, private sub timer tick. So this code here will only, it will be the code for the timer. Uh, now, the code to actually run down the timer is very, very easy. I'm gonna copy and paste it from this other project here. And that's it, lbltimer.txt equals lbltimer.txt minus 0 0.1. And if I run that now, oh, wait a second. I can't actually get to question three because nothing takes me there. Well done. Uh, so let's go back to question two. Uh, let's say in question two, if I click on this guy, I'm so glad we have plastic bags shuffling in the background there. Those damn cats. Uh, me dot hide and question three dot show. Wow, my cats are packing up. They're about to leave. So if I go blue and click this guy, good. And as you can see, that's starting to count down. Now, there's a problem. It's gonna go past zero and continue to count down past zero. That's not what we want. Uh, we want it to stop at zero, but essentially we don't even want it to stop at zero. We could, we could, Actually, let's do that. Let's make it stop at zero and make the text change. So what we could do is something like this. Pick the red one. And once that gets to zero, we could change this text here, which is called LBL question. We could change that to something that says uh, run out of time. So let's do that now. What I could do with rather than just run my timer down, I can add an if statement in there. Now we've looked at if statements in class previously. Uh, I'm not gonna go into a full explanation of if statements right now, uh, but if I just copy and paste this other text here and I do something like this. And let's say LBL question dot text. explain uh, these three lines in just a moment uh, once I speak to my cats. And we're back. So um, what are we, where are we up to? If statements with a timer. So what this three lines says right here, this is going to count down regardless. So as soon as uh, the form loads, uh, because the timer is enabled by default, it will automatically start to run this line of code, uh, which, will, which means it will automatically start to count down and uh, and change the label uh, with with the, the the revised countdown view. 
That was a horrible way of saying that. It will automatically start to count down the timer and the label will be updated uh, with the value for the timer. Uh, that's where it goes down from five and it goes down past zero into negative because it just continues to uh, minus uh, 0 0.1 from that uh, at certain intervals. Now you can change the interviews, you can make the countdown uh, intervals uh, count down faster or slower or whatever, uh, but that's, that's for another time. Um, now, what we want to do is once it gets to zero, we don't want it to go past. We want it to stop and we want it to say something. And that's where this if statement comes in. Uh, this is the easiest uh, control structure that you could have. Uh, I mean, other than a sequence, which is just gonna run and execute every line of code. Uh, this is a very, very simple if statement. It's checking a condition, right? And an if statement always checks a condition and it says, is the condition true? If the condition is true, it will then execute the lines that are indented uh, in the code. And that's, you know, VB uh, is very strict on its indentation and all of that. It, it actually means something. Uh, so you'll notice that if we have if and end if here. Uh, in that, this whole line of code is indented from, and we're getting messy here, but indented from private sub and sub. All of that is indented in end class public class uh, so just please be aware of that that there you know this is not the best illustration but similar to html where you have an opening tag and a closing tag for most things uh, in in visual basic and most programming languages again it's very important uh, visual basic is very strict on this that you have a closing uh, tag for lack of a better word um, that you you encapsulate all of that code uh, within the the beginning and the end so you'll notice that here when it runs into the if statement there's an if and an end if if you delete the end if well let's see what happens if you delete the end if i'm going to get an issue and this red line squiggly lion it's ugly and it won't let me compile my code It'll say there were build errors. Would you like to continue to run the last successful build? Uh, and if I say no, it will tell me, again, please read error messages. They're very useful. If must end with a matching end if, wow. It will even tell me the line where the problem is. Line six, if you can count up to six, one, two, three, four, five, six, there's a problem here with if. And the problem is there is no end if. Okay, so if I come back, uh, I can cheat by just pressing enter there, dragging that guy down and moving that down, or I could write end if. Uh, so, again, the indentation means something. Uh, in the end if, all of this code here is the code that it will execute only if this condition here is true lbl timer dot text equals zero so stay with me here and i know i've spent a little bit of time on this uh this in here in red this in red here will count down uh by m minusing 0 0.1 at a, a certain interval uh and once it gets from five or whatever you're starting at to zero once it equals zero and the label says zero, then and only then will I want it to run uh, these two lines of code here in green and orange. And that is timer1.enabled equals false, which means we are now turning it off. We are turning timer1 off from being enabled true to enabled false. We're turning it off. So that will mean it will stop counting down. Uh, that's how we stop it going into negative values. Uh, but then we're also doing a second thing is we're changing again look timer one object dot property or attributes equals value same thing object lbl question dot property text equals value out of time so we're doing both those things we're changing we're stopping the timer and then we are changing the text of 
the label to say out of time from whatever it said previously, which was pick the red one. So let's run that. Wow, that was a whole lot of talking. I picked the red one, we're picking a lot of red ones. Uh, we click this guy, and now we get to this. If I click it before it gets to zero, it does nothing, actually. But if I let it run to zero, it runs to zero, and you'll notice that it goes to out of time. Fantastic, that worked. What if I choose the red one before it gets to zero? Because essentially, we want it to pick the red one, and if it doesn't get to zero, we want it to then hide that form and bring up the fail form, right? So let's do that now. Uh, let's, let's, let's say we still don't pick the red one just yet. We need to add two more lines now. We are going to timer enabled equals false. LBL question dot text equals out of time, which that, that's going to be obsolete now. We're going to delete that. Um, and you'll see why in a minute because we won't even get a chance to see that text change because what we're going to do now is if the timer runs out of times uh, or or for example if lbl timer gets to zero then we want it to run these lines here which we want to stop the timer so it doesn't keep running in the background uh, we also want to say me.hide which is the current form dot hide and we want to say fail dot show which is the same uh, pair of lines that say close the current form and show the fail form right and you'll be very familiar with that every time you get something wrong so let's do that now i run it i go here i let it run till zero and hopefully boom fail all right and it it goes to fail um and it will then uh fail you know that now I've, now I've got to my restart i can restart back at uh, question one pick the red one question two hello there's a problem okay and this is why it's called debugging uh when we're programming because i found the bug and now we need to debug we need to fix the bug um you'll notice that if i get it wrong uh now it doesn't start at five anymore it still stays at zero so one last thing that i probably should do here in my timer is if it gets to zero disable the timer false then hide the form fail show uh but before i hide the form and fail show what i should probably do is lbl timer dot text back to five which is my default value for that form. there's still going to be a problem but i can force it that's going to go down to zero it's going to go there but when i restart i click it and i bet you it's just going to stay on five and it does it stays on five an extension question i would usually ask here can anyone tell me why it is staying on five and the answer would be because mr t mac the timer one is enabled false and we haven't flicked that back to true at any point uh, so we're gonna have to flick that back to true uh, again i'm spending a bit too long on this timer right now i'm gonna fix that in just a minute uh, but let's see what happens now if i click the red one before it, it counts down initially okay so let's go back to my design here Pick the red one. Oh, sorry stop executing rookie error I'm gonna delete this module these are other things I was knocking around with uh, let's see if I've got a question four Things 
700 and 650. Five times. Again, even the placement of the text, I mean, this is another annoying design thing. Even the placement of the text, you'll notice that here, when I'm clicking on my text, it has a location. So now if I have a defined size for my form, then my location really helps because it's all based on this guy right here. Uh, and it's basically telling me that that point right there is 195 on the X axis and 190 on the Y axis. If I wanted to bring that across a bit more, it could be 250. You can notice that updates a lot. So if I wanted all of my text, for example, this question, uh, the previous question, and all of that to be in the same place, uh, I could go through and, and figure out the exact location. I click red five times, and then I'm going to bring this guy across here. five times and I'm gonna do something else there in question four in the next video uh, but now let's quickly go back to question three so I click the red one again you should be very familiar with this now if I actually click red in time question four got It's going to run down, but if I click it before me, I'm going to wait. Boom. Good. There should still be a problem. Okay, now, if, again, at this point I'd pause for an extension question. Why did that happen? Let me just show you the problem again. Another bug that we need to debug. It runs down, but I picked a red one. But the time is still running in the background. I just gave you the answer. The time is still running in the background, and the fail form still pops up. Uh, that's the difference between, um, by the way, when you hide something and you close a form. Um, so it might be useful to cl close forms and people use different ways, uh, different workflows for those things. But uh, let's quickly hurry this video up. So uh, me.hide, I can change that to me.close and it will um, disable that. But then you might have to change a couple things. Instead, what you could do is actually just disable the timer again. Uh, it just even copy and paste this text. So PB red, when I click on it, it's now correct. So it's going to disable the timer uh, altogether. Pick the red one, question two. And now I won't get the timer's disabled, and I won't get the fail form pop up um, because it basically just froze the timer in place wherever it was before it got to zero, and we're up to question four. All right, uh, that's this video wrapped up. So we have timers. Uh, that's one way to do a timer uh, linked in with a text box or a label or something like that. Sorry, linked in with a label. Um, there's lots of ways to use timers. You, they don't have to be visible. You can have them in the back waiting uh, for something. Um, when we were doing a lot of the, the prototype testing uh, um, using the actual Moron Proto, what's it called again? The Moron Test app. Um, some of the tricks which we're going to try in our next question uh, purposely try to make you do the wrong thing or try to uh, make you wait for an awkward amount of time before you can actually click on something else. So um, I'll come back to that. Uh, let's, let's look at the next uh, question when we're going to click red five times uh, and see how that goes with some type of counter variable. Uh, and that will pretty much enable you now for almost everything that you need to do to start getting creative with your questions and different things now. All right, so let's kind of pause there and um, I'll come back with question four in just a minute.